Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Chapter 23, Gauss Law, problem number 39. Let me read out the problem. In figure, a small non-conducting uh, ball of mass m equal 1.0 milligrams and charge q equal 2.0 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb distributed uniformly throughout its uh, volume. Well, throughout its volume does not matter for us. We'll still consider charge density sigma in terms of charge per unit area because uh, the charged particle which will be under consideration is outside the sheet. So it doesn't matter if it's just on the surface or throughout the volume as long as it is uniformly distributed. So uh, in figure a small non-conducting ball of mass 1.0 into uh, milligrams uh, and charge Q equal to 2.0 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb hangs uh, from an insulating thread that makes an angle uh, theta equal to 30 degrees with a vertical. A uniformly charged non-conducting sheet uh, shown in cross section. Consider the gravitational force on the ball and assuming the sheet extends uh, far vertically and into and out of the page. So in short, we'll consider it an infinite sheet. Calculate the surface charge density sigma of the sheet. Surface charge density sigma is what we have to find out. So. Uh, for the sheet, we already know <coughs> field will be this way. Okay, we'll have a uniform field uh, on this side rightward, sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. Okay. Sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. Now, what are the forces on this uh, small ball which is having some charge? One force will be electric force which is in the direction of field so that is q into e we'll have gravitational force which is mg we'll have tension force along the string i hope this is visible t okay tension force t now uh I'll use Lamy's theorem here, Lamy's theorem, for those of you who are not aware of Lamy's theorem, that's very simple, Lamy's theorem. If we have three forces acting on a particle, say F1 this way, F2 this way, F2 this way, and then somewhere here, F3 this way, Okay, F3 this way and the particle is in equilibrium. That is the condition. Particle must be in equilibrium. Okay, particle must be in equilibrium. Uh, uh, if this angle is theta 2, 3 between forces 2 and 3 and this angle is theta 1, 3 between forces 1 and 3 and this angle is theta 1, 2 between forces 1 and 2. Oh, so we have three forces acting on a particle which is in equilibrium. That means net force is 0. So uh, angles are between 1 and 2, theta 1, 2, between uh, 1 and 3, th theta 1, 3, between 2 and 3, theta 2, 3. Then uh, what is now this Lemmy's theorem? F1 divided by sine of the angle between other two forces. So that is sine of theta 2, 3 must be equal to F2 divided by sine of the angle between other two forces which is here theta 1 3 is equal to F2 what did I write F2 this is F2 F2 then is equal F3 divided by sine of the angle between 1 and 2 1 and 2 F3 and the opposite angle theta 1 2 so this is like theorem. this is what I'll use we can also deal with the components here and reach to the same result, but I think this way it is a bit easier. So now, uh, this angle here is 90 degrees, no doubt about that. This angle here, this angle here is theta, okay, same, alternate interior angles. So total angle is 90 plus theta, 90 degrees plus theta. Okay, this whole angle is 90 plus theta. This is 90 here. Sum of three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So this must be 90 minus theta. Okay, this must be 90 minus theta. And then this is 90. So we have 90 plus 90 minus theta. That makes it 180 minus theta. This whole angle. Okay, this whole angle. 
this whole angle. This angle here is 90 minus theta because sum of the three angles is 180 and this whole angle is the 90 plus 90 minus theta which is 180 minus theta. So we have ang uh, angle between all the three. Theta we already know is 30 degrees. Now let me uh, use Lamy's theorem here. I'll write, uh, we had to find out sigma. So QE, QE divided by sine of the angle between other two forces. Other two forces T and Mg which is 180 minus theta. So sine of 180 minus theta is equal to Mg, other one I'll choose Mg, mg divided by sine of the angle between other two forces sine of the angle between other two forces qe and t are the other two forces which is 90 plus theta so sine of 90 degrees plus theta so this implies this is qe divided by sine of theta sine of 180 minus theta is just sine of theta is equal to mg divided by sine of 90 plus theta is cos of theta you must be aware of this. So now E, I'll use for E. This was uh, QE divided by sine theta. So I'll write QE divided by sine theta instead of E, I'll write sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 is equal to mg divided by cos of theta mg divided by cos of theta here it is mg divided by cos of theta just in a sort of e i'm writing sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 okay this implies sigma is what we had to find out 2 epsilon 0 upstairs 2 epsilon 0 mg is already there uh, q downstairs divided by q sine theta upstairs sine theta divided by cos theta is tan of theta and theta we already know is 30 degrees. So let's substitute the values. So sigma is equal to into epsilon 0 is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12. Mass is given. Mass is 1 milligram. So that is 10 to the power minus 6 kg. Milli 10 to the power minus 3. Then grams again 10 to the power minus 3. So 10 to the power minus 6 kg. G is roughly 10. Divided by charge is also given. 2 into 10 to the power minus 8. So 2 into 10 to the power minus 8, then tan of 30 degrees, that is 1 divided by root 2, root 3, 1 divided by root 3. So this is what we had to work out. I have already done that. I'll just write down the result. Sigma is equal to 5.1 into 10 to the power minus 9. Coulomb per meter square. This is what we are asked to find out. 5.1 into 10 to the power minus 9 Coulomb per meter square is the surface charge density. Is that fine? That will do for this session.